Howdy folks, it's Thursday and uh, it's a draw giveaway day and a lot of other cool things, but uh, Monday we did a review on this machine and there's still quite a bit to uh, explain. Uh, it's got a great sale price, so I've got a link for it for a really good sale price. What makes this machine so special, besides it's a beautiful machine, but it also runs so many different filament types that it was kind of shocking and as I explained you know we'll get into all this but this whole week needs to be explained so let's do that yes explanations uh, right now uh, I've got this running so I've turned the camera away a little bit to try to get the microphone away from the uh, machine the machine is not loud, it's not noisy, but the microphone makes it sound, you know, 10 times worse than it really is. It's really actually very quiet with, with this running, but anyway, uh, explain. Very first thing was that the tarantula here, uh, from uh, TiVo Up, which is, this is the manual for it even right here, they made a tarantula a lot, some time ago. Then they came out with the Tarantula RS, which was, you know, a little bit more performance, a little bit better machine, and that was cool. Uh, then they came out recently with the Tarantula Pro, which, you know, is really the best of the Tarantula's line so far. And this is actually the Tarantula Pro. It doesn't say it on the manual. It doesn't say it anywhere on here, and nobody mentioned it when they were, say, sending it. But when I was putting the SD card in, I noticed a software come up that said, welcome to the you know, Tarantula Pro. Oh, didn't know. You know, it's good to know, but didn't know. The uh, first number one thing about this was too, was the, it's only three pieces really, that you assemble it and you can put the wires together. You can have this thing running in about 15, 20 minutes if you're, if you're not a newbie. If you're a newbie to 3D printing, it might take you 30 minutes or something, you know, it might take a half, whole half hour to put it together. There's really nothing to assemble. And that's part of, you know, was the push on this one. But uh, even the, uh, I look back through my emails and everything, contacts, even the, nobody said Tarantula Pro. So, and I didn't know. And even look at the manual, it doesn't say Tarantula Pro, just, you know, it's all in English. And there's some really good explanations here about uh, the slicer software that, you know, that is included on the card that comes with it. But it also has a uh, Titan uh, hot end on it that's a little bit better than what I thought it was supposed to be coming with because I was basing the whole thing on the Tarantula, the original machine, not the Tarantula Pro. So that, I, need, I just wanted to explain that, that it's a bigger, better machine than even I realized what it was. So it makes the price just that much better too. But also the sale price was about within the specifications of where I was told it was going to be when we released the video and we had the, uh, the sales price from uh, uh, madethebest.com. So no affiliate with them. Uh, we're, you know, we're not, you know, they don't pay sponsorship or anything like that. They just offer to send a machine over and do a review on it. So yeah, so at least Amazon can't come after me for anything. Yay. Which is, uh, leads me to the next thing. We did a review on a uh, auto jumper here on last Thursday. A lot of editing, uh, unfortunately, a lot of stuff had to be removed. Uh, almost not so much because I was using bad language or anything, but just there was just so much time spent trying to jumpstart the Jeep that it was like there's uh, frustration with this thing and there were some other problems and issues that I didn't even get to cover in the video. And so I'm just gonna throw that out to you because we are giving that away today and I think whoever wins it should know, or heads up, you know, there are, yeah, there was some other issues with this thing. Uh, probably the number one first thing was it was 85% charged when it came in the door, which, you know, I was like, cool. So we thought, well, we'll charge up to 100% before we do the show and that way when we go to the Jeep or something, you know, we'll have a fully charged machine ready to go. Uh, so we plunk the charger in. It says it's fast charging, but it's on a USB 3.0. If you've ever seen USB 3.0, it's sort of like a thunder, it looks just like a Thunderbolt data cable. It's very, very small, so it's not really built for current, but anyway, uh, the industry's going that way. So I thought, great, you know, it's, yeah, they're, they're modern. The charger got so hot on the outlet that it almost, it's almost like burns your fingers, kind of, uh, un, you know, very uncomfortable when I pulled it from the wall. And the cable was hot. So that's like 
<clears throat> that was two things that went wrong right away. Was not happy about that. And so uh, the next issue was the button thing. If you look at the unit, there's like three buttons on there. Well, not really, there's one, there's a power button. And when you tap, uh, I had to tap twice, and of course nothing happened, tap twice, something happens, tap twice, nothing happened, and it just went back and forth. But I thought, well, maybe when you get used to it or you get it some kind of, a, you know, you get I have acclimated to this particular unit, it'll be okay. So I took it out to the uh, Jeep, and there was, I don't know how many times and clips were removed or just deleted because I could not get the Jeep started because I could not get the thing to come on. And in the sun, you can't read the buttons, you don't see the light. Even the camera picked the light up, but I could not actually see whether the power light was on or off when I was trying to get the Jeep started. And I got very frustrated with it because also the percentage fill looked like zero, zero, zero instead of 100%. Because again, in the sun, you can't read that thing. And between the three buttons, I started wondering, am I pushing the wrong button? Went back to the manual, no, you just hit here twice and uh, that should engage the power or something. Kept doing it. We finally got a clean shot where I actually hit it and the power did come on and it was charged, you know, ready to jump the battery or jump the car. So at that point we said, okay, well, we'll film that part. But I didn't want to hold back from you guys and lie and say, oh, this is a terrific product. And on top of that, the final icing on the cake was I looked at the price of it and uh, to be honest, uh, I think the price is too high. It's very disappointing for, you know, what it is. If the features were as great and wonderful as it's supposed to be, maybe the price would be okay. But I've seen these things sell from $30 to $150 and theirs was $160 something, so I was very disappointed. Now, we released the video and said, no, you know, this is not the one to buy. Uh, there are, you know, cheaper ones out there that'll do the job. Uh, obviously, probably a little upset over that, but they didn't contact me and say, well, what specifically went wrong, or was it, what didn't you like about it, or, you know, let's do a survey, or see what we can do for the next time around. No, they just, uh, suddenly someone reported to Amazon that we had not correctly, legally had all within the rules of operating Amazon as a store to uh, provide links for products. So Amazon said, you're going to have to clean this up now because somebody's reported you and we'll give you some days, we'll give you some time on it, but it needs to be fixed. So rather than try to fix it because Amazon did not give me a clear definition of what it is exactly they wanted, well, I just went ahead and removed all of our Amazon links. Now there are links on there for product that might be Amazon, but see, that's not our links. That's not our store. We don't get sponsored. We're not affiliated with that link or anything. So it's still on there because it's, it's quite fine, it's legal. So <clears throat> we're not sure if that came through from uh, just so happened to be the uh, upsetting review uh, on a product because it was very really the first disappointing product I've had this year. But that came in and was like not happy with it. Now today, uh, I've set this up in Cura and set it up with Tarantula uh, Pro and of course we're just doing another Benchy. The other thing that got edited out, which was the test cube, and here's the cube right here, and it is absolutely just as good. I don't know if I can get focused, you know, but just as good as anything I've ever seen off any printer. The raft is absolutely, you know, perfect. But the raft sort of relies back to that, what you saw me do with the paper, where I get the bed leveled before I start printing. And that's really, like I said, that's the big secret. Anyway, there's a lot of good features, a lot of nice things about this machine. The tarantula is a very impressive machine. And the other thing that was still blowing me away on this that long list of different filaments that could run. And it also, I see this morning on there that the company's saying that it's possible to run nylon. Again, you know, wow. Now, any of those exotic type filaments like the ASA, the ABS, and even the nylon things, you would probably, you'd have to uh, put some kind of enclosure together, which you could. This is a nice machine size that you could probably build a really nice enclosure for and put a little, you know, glass door on the front or plexiglass, whatever, because you want to control heat. You want to control cooling down. You want to control heat, that kind of thing when you're running those exotic plastics. Uh, it's just it's nature of the game. I've tried to run ABS and uh, ASA in the, in the past on other machines and there was a number of failures, uh, problems with sticking to the bed, 
uh, cooling down, cracking, all kinds of you know wildness going on, and they, the machine wasn't enclosed. So we tried to build an enclosure, and that failed because we ran into various issues with the machine versus where the filament at the time was fed from. That machine is no longer here, but it's still working. It's out, actually, it went to a, um, I believe it went to a printer farm, and that's where it's at now, where there's like 100 printers all running, you know, jobs off at all on a regular basis. It was an excellent machine, love the machine, but um, we had so many come in that I said, okay, you know, something's gotta go, I can't, I don't have enough space to, you know, I don't want a printer farm here. Well, it would be kinda cool, but, you know, I'm not gonna have one. So we got rid of the oldest machine, which like I said, went to a printer farm. This one here uh, is an excellent, awesome machine. For the price, the Tarantula Pro was 300 and something. I'm not gonna be able to remember exactly what it was, but it was a quite an expensive piece of equipment to buy, partly because of all the different filaments that it could run. And it's obviously, it's well built, it's a good machine, easy to put together. So the uh, Price on the link there is is going to be a shocker. I believe it's 269. It's like wow, what a buy! <laughs> That's a good machine, especially if you're looking for uh, having the machine around for a, like a long period of time and being able to run different materials. You know, there it is. So let's see what else do we have to explain this week. Well, <laughs> so I'm over here while we're building the benchy here. Uh, which is going to be about two hours. Uh, there's a fella on there that's going to ask me how long. Well, about two hours. But I'll tell you right now, it is it is the best. I think it is the very best benchy I have ever seen to date. Which uh, sort of you know, oh again, you know, wow. <laughs> I love 3D printing. Anyways, another thing that needed to be explained. We shipped two of these prizes out on Monday, and this one here could not be shipped out because the fella's address. Uh, you know who you are. <clears throat> We're going to fix the address today because he entered for the for the auto jumper. So that's good because now we have his address corrected. Because his address came up wrong last week and I don't know if he just typed it in wrong or what happened. We tried to fix it. We could not. Took it to the post office. They couldn't figure it out. I said, well, we'll have to wait on it. But Harry, in Greenville, Ohio, your item will go out I guess it'll go out as early as maybe tomorrow. Uh, we'll try to get this out to you because I really like to see it Monday. Uh, I took it all the way to packaging and everything. We had to tear it all out, take it back another, take a look at the ticket, everything. Anyways, Harry, <laughs> we're gonna get this to you. You know. Also, uh, we have some more auto jumpers that. Are, should be coming in shortly in the future because I've got other people that want to send me their jumpers to take a look at. And it's not just jumpers. If it's a 3D printer or if it's a laser or something, if I don't like something and I see something that I think is wrong, guys, I'm going to tell you. You know, I'm going to let them have it. Those, you know, it, it might not get pretty, but you know, you, you will hear. Generally, uh, most stuff is, is pretty good. Now, one other thing. Uh, James has written me a lot. Mr. James and I have had quite a little relationship and he's asked about the bucket grips. So here's the deal, James. I'm gonna pull your ticket and I'm gonna send you these bucket grips. This is the last pair I have in stock here. We do not 3D print these. I don't know, I guess they could be 3D printed, but anyways, they're available through uh, Lowe's. But anyways, I'm gonna send you these, this pair out for free straight to Mr. James because he's just a, he's a fantastic guy and I really love him. So <laughs> we're gonna send these out. But you're not going to be in the draw, James. Sorry, you know, you, you forfeit, right? Okay. <laughs> I think he understands. I hope he does. Anyway, uh, now we've got all these tickets, and there's one other person I wanted to say hi to out there. And I'm going to have to explain how this works. Uh, Stefan, Stefan, you are on, uh, I'll keep this off the books a little bit, but you're on Balmoral Avenue in a place that was uh, we were used to refer to it as Ham uh, Ham Town. And I lived just down the street from there about 40 plus years ago. So I'm saying hi to Stefan. I don't know how you see me or how you found the channel, but uh, yeah, about 45 years ago or so, I used to live on that street just probably about, oh, I don't know, about just a little further down the street from where you're at by looks of that address. Anyways, uh, 
just had to say that to Stefan because uh, I thought that was, when his address came out, it was like, I know exactly what that is. What's going on? Anyway, bucket, tickets. Let's get this thing rolling. Sorry about the noise. This thing is still, like I say, run away. Finishing up a benchy. Uh, when we close the show up, I'll try to give you guys a close-up of the benchy that came off this thing today. But I'm just looking from here, and like I said, it is it is absolutely amazing. It's I didn't think there, was, there could be a better benchy than the ones I've made, but this one looks even better than, yeah, ever. So Now, because of the uh, situation and... Uh, we're just gonna pull, let's just pull a ticket and find out who's getting this uh, auto charger, which, uh, let's see, where, where are we going here? Where are we at? Ah, oh wow, okay, Jim, okay. Jim, you are in Glasgow, <laughs> Montana, wow. You know, up north, you need a set of those jumpers in the back of your car. Keith mentioned that uh, this week to me, and he's right, you know, like, we all should have one of those in the car, a good one, or. I don't know, maybe even a cheap one like I've got, but uh, they are super to have if you ever get into a problem. We also had one er earlier this year that does tires and jumps the car, which was uh, kind of cool too. But uh, Jim, Glasgow, Montana, you lucky devil, you, you get this beautiful uh, auto jumper that uh, I just wanted out of here, so I'm not keeping it, you know. But we do have some more coming in at, uh, that also have uh, different features and also, well, we'll see better, you know, some pretty good prices, whatever, we'll see. I'll try to provide a link if I can get one uh, for the auto jumper in case you're interested. And uh, we'll put that below too. I'll provide li what links I can. I cannot provide links for uh, anything from my store or from anything to do with Amazon for myself at this time because of the issue we had. And so, uh, unfortunately, that means that we will not be drawing uh, for another tool this week until next week. Next week, we'll try to restart the draws because this, uh, like I said, it, it, this week was, it was a mess. And there was a lot going wrong this week. Uh, it just, it happens, yeah. But uh, Jim, congratulations on that in Montana. Man, that's some cold weather place. That's going to be a place where a jumper will, man, might save your life up there <laughs> when it comes winter time. Whoa, ho, ho, beautiful Benji. Okay, all righty. Thank you for watching uh, Coffee and Tools this week and tune in to see what's going on in the garage. And I'm out of here and over and out.